Number 54. Arrange the following solutions in order by their decreasing freezing points. And then we have a lot of list of solutes, right? We have a 0.1 molality Na3PO4, 0.1 molality C2H5OH, 0.01 molality CO2, 0.15 molality NaCl, and 0.2 molality CaCl2. And we want to find out, uh, we want them in the order by their decreasing freezing points. So let's just make the list right now. If we're trying to order these in their decreasing freezing points, that means that the highest freezing point would be on the left, and then the lowest would be on the right. So highest freezing point and lowest freezing point. Now, um, in order for this question to work, there has to be some things that are kept standard. Now, as we're reading this question, it just stated that we have the following solutions. And they did give us the solutes, right? Na3PO4, C2H5OH, CO2, NaCl, CaCl2. But the idea here is that they did not give us a solvent. They just said that we have these uh, solutions. So in order for this question to work, we have to keep one thing uh, constant. And if we're keeping one thing constant, we're going to assume that the solvent is H2O, right? Everything is just being dunked in water, so we're good with that. Okay, now we want to find out the different freezing points, the different freezing temperatures. And just know that if you're now starting off with solutes being dunked in a solvent, your freezing point is always going to go lower. So as you add more, you know, as you add solutes into your solvent, you will always get a depressed freezing point. It's sad. But sad, depressed, low. Freezing points will only go lower. That's why it's a freezing point depression. There is no such thing as raising a freezing point. Just know that the general freezing point, the pure freezing point of H2O, if you did not have, um, and maybe I'll just say fewer, uh, fewer, pure freezing point, FP, of H2O is 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius. So if you just had water and you froze it in you know standard conditions, it would freeze at 0 degrees Celsius. But now you're adding all of these uh, solutes to your water. The freezing point will drop even more. So you're thinking about negative values now. You would never have a freezing point of like one degree Celsius for water, two degrees Celsius. It just doesn't happen. Freezing points will always, always, always be lower than the pure. But now, how are we going to rank these? Well, we're talking about freezing point depression. We have solutes. We got molality values. That's these little M's, right? These like italics M's, those are molalities. So there's only one formula that comes to mind, and that's this one right here. Delta TF equals KF times the molality times I, which is the Van Hoft factor. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring these down a little bit here. You know what? This is going to be the final answer. So we're going to bring this all the way down. We still have a lot of work. Not a lot, but we still need to work with all of these solutes. But delta TF, the triangle just means the change. So this is the change in the freezing point equals the freezing point depression constant. Now, the freezing point depression constant is only for your solvent. And that's why we kept it all standard or all the same. Because if each one of these solutes all have the same solvent, they would all have the same KF value. So for this example, we don't really care about the KF because that's not really changing in our examples. But for each one of these, we have changing um, molality values. So we have to keep the M in there. And what is the I value? Well, the I value is called a Van Hoff factor. 
have no idea why they chose I. There is no I in this, but um, Van Hoff factor is basically the number in which uh, you will have your ions in solution. So this depends whether you have a non-electrolyte, which means that that does not break down in your solvent, which we picked was water. If you have a non-electrolyte, your Van Hoff factor is one. But if you have an electrolyte, your Van Hoff factor could be two, could be three, could be four. This depends greatly on the type of electrolyte you have, which we'll get into in a little bit. So let's list these out. We have Na3PO4. And they did, and actually, but let me do all the compounds first. So Na3PO4, we have C2H5OH. We got CO2. We got NaCl. And we have CaCl2. Okay. So in order to find the change in the freezing points, we're just going to take the molalities and times it by each I factor. So for Na3PO4, the molality for this one was, and maybe what I'll do is I'll make it black. Black goes with black for molality. So we got 0 0.1 times a number. C2H5OH, that's also 0 0.1 times a number, right? I'm just taking these molalities right now. CO2 would be 0 0.01 times a number. Right, doesn't want to make sure. NaCl, 0 0.15 times a number. And then 0 0.2 times a number. Okay, but now we just have to figure out what is or what are the Van Hoff factors for these solutes. Well, let's see. Is it an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte? A non-electrolyte is anything that is covalent. So covalent just means all non-metals. If I look at Na3PO4, I have a metal in here, so that's not covalent. But C2H5OH, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, another hydrogen, those are all non-metals. This is covalent. So we put a one right here. Covalent molecules, they will just be one whole molecule in the water. Same thing with CO2, carbon and oxygen, all non-metals, so this is covalent. And that's why you stick a one there. NaCl, I have sodium, that's a metal, so I'm going to skip over that. And calcium, that's also a metal, so I'm going to skip over that. That means that the three that's left, they're all ionic. And electrolytes are the ionic ones with uh, H2O being the solvent. So ionic, ionic and ionic, which means that this Van Hoff factor can't be one. But this depends on how many ions you are, you know, you are breaking down into. So Na3PO4, if you had to break this compound up into its ions, you would have Na+, because Na is in group 1 plus 1, and PO4 is a polyatomic ion. PO4 always has a 3 minus charge. You could also get that charge because there was a 3 here. You could do the crisscross rule up. Um, but then, how many sodiums do you have? You have 3 of them. So, you got 3 NAs. But the 4 is part of your polyatomic. So, how many PO4s do you have? You only have 1. Let's do the same for each other one here that's ionic. So we're going to break up the NaCl, and we're going to break up the CaCl2. If we break up NaCl, split right down the middle, you have Na plus and Cl minus. There's only one Na, so you only have one of them. And you have one Cl, so you only got one of them. Let's do it for the CaCl2. If you break this down the middle, right, you got calcium... Calcium is in group 2, so that's a 2 plus charge. And the chloride ion is a negative 1. You have 1 calcium, but you have 2 chlorines. So I'm going to put a 2 here. Now, to get the total number of ions that you broke down into, all you have to do is just add your total ions up. 
So you have three sodiums plus one phos uh, phosphate, you have four ions. And four I, your I value is equal to four. One plus one is two, you have two total ions, so your I value would be a two. One plus three is, whoa, one, one plus two is three, you would have three total ions, so three for your Van Hoff factor. Now, let's find out these values. And keep in mind that when we're, you know, multiplying these, we're getting a change in the freezing point. So for this one, my delta TF would be roughly 0 0.4, right? If we just do the math here, 0 0.1 times 4, just to have it on the screen, 0.4. This would be 0.1, right? And maybe I'll put all of these, delta TF, delta TF would equal to 0 0.01, delta TF, would equal to 0.15 times 2 is 0.3, and then delta TF equals 0.2 times 3 is 0 0.6. Okay, now keep in mind that these are generally degrees Celsius values. We're not actually solving for the real change because we did not times by the KF value because that was standard. But just know that each one of these is a change from the original freezing point. So if you have the lowest change, if you have the lowest freezing point change, that means that you didn't change a lot from the zero degree Celsius, which means you would have the highest freezing point because the lowest one is the one that drops, the one that has the bigger change. So the lower the delta T, uh, value, this means that you will have the highest freezing point because you didn't change too much. And on the flip side, if you have a great change for your freezing point and the freezing point will only depress, you have the lowest freezing point because you have the, the, the highest depression, uh, lowest freezing point. Okay. So I'm looking at these, the highest freezing point would be the lowest delta TF value. And it seems like this one does the trick. So the CO2 would be the first one to go. So we'll say that this one is the 0 0.01 molality of CO2 would be the uh, highest freezing point. And then maybe we'll say that this is the highest, so we'll put a greater than sign. Um, then who's next? This one comes next, right? So we got, what was that? 0.1, 0 0.1 molality C2H5OH, which has a higher uh, freezing point than which one comes next? So we did this one, we did this one. Now I have 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. 0 0.3 is next. So that's the 0 0.15 molality NaCl, which has a higher freezing point because it has the lowest change or the lower change. And then 0.4, so we have 0 0.1 molality Na3PO4. And I'm going to bring this, I need a little bit more room. And I think I could get it in. There we go. The lowest freezing point would have the highest change, and that is the 0 0.2 molality CaCl2. And this is your final answer. There you go. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, yeah, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We love helping anybody that we can with chem, uh, we have physics and math videos on the channel, so maybe we can help you out with those as well. Always keep learning, keep working hard, good luck on those tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.